You know that thing when you haven't shot a video in months and months and you can't seem to film your opener and you keep tripping over your words literally 35, 40 times? That's me right now. So I'm going to read from my notes because I can't seem to speak. So, hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is the... Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is the Metalwork Tips collaboration, hashtag TipsBlitz19. What this is, is the brainchild of Emma Ritson from Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop. And it's a collaboration between her, myself, and all the other machining YouTubers out there. The idea is to make a five minute video filled with, I guess, one or more tips, shop tips that, you know, that we all do and we want to share with everybody. Uh, the idea is to release them all on the same day, so the clock is ticking, let's begin. Our first tip is around chucks and arbors. We all have seen arbors like this that have a tine on the back, it goes in, and when you retract your tailstock, it pushes it right out. Very handy. This is something that I learned a long time ago, the hard way, but what happens if your arbor doesn't have one? So you're going to put it in there, and I'm not going to get it stuck, but it will get stuck, and no matter how much you withdraw your tailstock, it's not going to come out. So I found that if you drill and tap it, and you put a little screw in here, and you could, you could mount this right into a chuck. It's very non-precision. It just had, The head of the screw just needs to be smaller than the smallest diameter here on your, uh, on your, your arbor. And you put your screw in. And we lock it in. And now, it comes right out. No more struggle, no more wedges to take your, uh, your drill chuck out. Our next tip comes around manufacturing. Now in my shop, I'm constantly getting reorders for parts that I've made before. So I found that if I take, you know, one of the parts, any shop notes that I have, uh, any drawings, and all the tools that I'm going to need to make this part and keep them all together in one. So you can see for, for this lower bandsaw guide here that I make, and I make these a lot, I have the slitting saw ready to go. I have different shop notes, different, you know, QC checks, just anything of importance because you know you forget this stuff. I've got all the tooling, I got the the end mills, the taps. Uh, here's another model. Here's another piece that I use for setups for determining um, diameters and how deep the shoulder is. So, kits. That's what I'm basically calling these things, part making kits. And you keep everything together in one neat package and uh, it makes everything way easier, especially ordering new stuff. So you could kind of keep these kits stocked. You know, I could have two or three end mills, two or three taps. If I break something, I'm not stuck. Uh, you can lose a day, you could lose up to five days ordering a part that might not be in stock. So, kits. The next tip involves measurement of parts and doing it fast. If you're making a lot of parts and you need to run them off and take a measurement basically to see if it's go or no go, you can use this. Now some of you know what this is and some of you don't. So those of you who don't know what this is, this is an indicating micrometer. Basically what you do is you set your, your uh, measurement and then you put your piece in and, you, and it, it will measure with this little, there's a little dial over here, all the way over here is the dial. and this. This uh, arm right here is a range, you know, a low range, and that's the other one is the high range. If I unscrew this, if I unscrew this, I can set, you know, the high range and the low range. They're just little arms that move. So how you would do this is you would make up a gauge block stack, make it very accurate to what your parts are going to be, and in this case, mine are 313 thousandths and seven tenths. So. I loosen this guy up here. And what I do is I I clamp down on this, tighten down on it until the the, uh, the needle moves right in the middle, right on the zero. 
All right, and then I press this and I can release. We'll lock the anvil, and then you can measure your parts to see if they're in spec. See that one? Pretty much right on. This one's at the low portion of the range. <clears throat> this one is at the high. Whoop. Maybe there's some kind of. Oh, there we go. That one's a nice one. So as these come right off the, the lathe, I measure them, and then when they're good, they go right in the bucket. These are really good because they measure, you know, the, the, the really tight tolerance is really fast. You don't have to sit and worry, you know, cal recalculating everything. It's all about speed. It's all about making money and moving faster. Just as a side note, the low tolerance is 313 thousandths and four tenths, and the high range of the tolerance is 314 thousandths and two tenths. So that's a grand total of eight tenths, <laughs> not even a thousandth. So these really, they really shine when you're trying to, you know, measure stuff and, and move quickly. One last thing to mention when you're using an indicating micrometer, because you're measuring such small little distances, always remember to keep recal uh, calibrating this every day, even several times a day. Just go in with your gauge block stack, Mic it with a known mic that works good, and you know, make sure that your gauge block stack, for some reason, is the right one. I mean, God knows somebody can take it and swap it out, or whatever. And you want to make sure that you keep, you know, recalibrating your mic because you don't want to have a run of parts when this thing is off. You could put this down, you could drop it, it could turn, it could, you know, you could see I'm turning it just like that. You could you could totally ruin a whole run of parts. So remember to recalibrate. Our next tip involves cutting oil. Now, if you notice these two different pieces, what do you notice about that? Cut on the same machine, using the same process, but my lathe was running out of the oil that I had. And what did I have? I had uh, what, what you would refer to as oil that stains or staining oil. It was a clear, yellowy type of mobile oil. I forget the number, but it was I think it was labeled as just light cutting oil. So when these parts, and these parts heat up really, really, uh, really hot, I don't know what changes at the molecular level, but you can see the discoloration of this one. You could see the, you could see the discoloration of this one compared to that. That looks like a brand new penny, right? So this is what you want to have. Mobile Met 426, non-staining. What that does is it just keeps all your parts from, well, staining. All right, for the last tip, let's just walk around the shop and see what we can find just to point out, you know, to make your life easier. Number one, get yourself a digital microscope uh lint free uh, microfiber rags you get a bag of these at walmart for a couple bucks these keep my safety glasses clean all the time um, dry erase board if you don't have a dry erase board get one Ugh, do i need to tell you why math numbers whatever your girlfriend writes something cute on it for you looking up here everybody needs a stare at tapping and drill chart and another thing here's another tip for jacking the longer your handle, the longer the, the pump stroke is. So I made this little T-handle thing here, which kind of goes in. Whoop. And then you could just sit and you can, you could kind of like speed jack the thing up. You have oil, buy them in bulk. You'll never run out because you always run out when you need it. Um, machinery's handbook, keep one handy. You always need it. If you have Noga arms, Keep them extended, keep them loaded with the tools that you use most, the indicators, clamps, whatever, um, and keep them ready to go. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it was informative. I hope I was able to show you something that you might not have seen before. If not, then I simply reiterated what you already know. Until next time, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.